Time is an immutable and unmalleable property of the universe. Or is it? If you think you understand what time is, you're wrong. Even scientists can't agree on what time is. There are some things that we do know about time, but what we do know is contradictory. Why is time and space different? What is the origin of time? And is time even real? Let's discuss what we do know so you can understand it. We are all forced to trudge along a singular direction of time, forever moving forward with no agency to change our course. But why is this true? Why can't we go backwards through time? Why can't we speed up or slow down time? They are all valid questions, but are the answers satisfactory? One answer is that time is not even real, but what does it even mean? It certainly doesn't make time less confusing, but what do we know? Our fascination with time isn't new. In ancient times, we use gods to explain the passage of time and moments in our lives. Many people have tried to tackle the concept of time in a way that doesn't invoke pagan gods. For example, ancient Greek philosophers toyed with the concept of time as an experience rather than something fundamental to the universe. Aristotle defines time as a number of change with respect to the before and after, which means that changes in the universe cause time. He also infers that time is only a valid concept if beings are present to observe it and it doesn't exist otherwise. Maybe we don't have so much hubris in our view of time more recently, but describing time as a number that counts change is not that different from some modern views on time. This idea of time persisted until Isaac Newton came up with a better theory. He invented the idea that time has nothing to do with change, but instead is always moving forward, irrespective if something changes or not. This is likely how you think of time in a Newtonian fashion. The time is a moving element of reality that maintains the idea of causality. We will find out later that even causality isn't safe and that this view of time is just not true. But we'll get back to this. First, we need to talk about Einstein and how he changed how we understand time completely. We finally got a hint into the nature of time when Einstein formulated his theories of special and general relativity. In these theories, Einstein gave us two key insights into how time works on a grand scale. The first was that time is relative, which means that the flow of time is not the same for everyone in the universe. The second was both time and space can bend. These two theories, experimentally confirmed again and again, are founded on the idea that time is a dimension just like space. This is in direct contradiction to how time is viewed in quantum mechanics, and I will get to this point. But for now, what does it mean that time is a dimension? Einstein postulated that space and time are fundamentally linked and form a combined space-time, where there are four dimensions, with the fourth being time. Time is still unique in this definition because we can only move in one direction in time, but in any direction in space. The maths itself doesn't really prevent us from moving backwards through time, but we're yet to really find a way to break this paradigm despite having many theories. One way to think of Einstein's view on time is to imagine space as a sheet of paper. Then this space sheet is moving along a time axis, and that is the passage of time. But it goes beyond this because both space and time bend due to gravity and moving very fast. So the space sheet is all dinted and wavy and the axis of time is not a singular axis. Instead, every single point in space and the object that is in it has a different time vector. For instance, the time that you experience on the ground is different to the time someone is experiencing on a plane. Now, this is not just some unmeasurable amount. Navigation systems have to take into consideration this time difference for commercial flights. And GPS only works when you include time dilation predicted by both special and general relativity. There are a lot of predictions that we can make using relativity and also a lot of ways that we can test it. As far as we can tell, Einstein's theories are extremely good, but that's not the whole story, unfortunately. For starters, it leaves a lot to be desired. It doesn't explain why time exists and why we can only move forward in time. But we have some theories about this and I'll get back to them. First, we need to discuss the time elephant in the room, quantum mechanics. 
The biggest problem in physics is that our understanding of the universe on a grand scale disagrees with our understanding of the universe on a small scale. In quantum mechanics, time is not a dimension. Instead, it is a smooth, continuous property that can track the order of events. Unlike everything else in quantum mechanics, time is not quantized. While some theories do predict and use quantized time with a particle called a chronon. For most quantum mechanics, time is not a quantized quantity. Furthermore, we have yet to find a need to quantize time to explain any observation. So time in quantum mechanics behaves more like Newtonian time with the small addition of special relativity. That is, we don't include curved space time, but we do include the change in space and time from something moving very fast, which in quantum mechanics is quite commonplace. But if only time was that simple in quantum mechanics, something very strange happens that can allow us to break causality. Causality makes complete sense to us. The classical and probably never happened story is that an apple fell on Newton's head and this caused him to think and formulate the idea of gravity. We would never say that Newton formulating the idea of gravity caused an apple to fall on his head. Now, despite the clear flaw and actual cause there, we have an understanding of the order of events and that these events can't have their order reversed. Well, it turns out that in quantum mechanics, that may not be true, and we have experiments to demonstrate it. Quantum entanglement is a very strange idea, but it is a fundamental component of quantum mechanics. When particles are entangled, they can do a whole lot of things that are not intuitive to us at all. And this is the foundation of quantum mechanics. But for this discussion, the important aspect that you need to understand is that two or more particles can have a non-definite future. We cannot know enough information about the particles to make an absolute prediction about their future. Instead, we need to calculate the probability of a certain future occurring. Now, there are some intense philosophical arguments about what this means, but let's ignore these for this discussion. Because the particles are in this funky state, we can act on them and get strange results. We can interact with one particle with say action A and then do action B, but we can do the opposite with the other particle. Now the quantum entangled particles are in a causal superposition. It is not clear which action occurred first. This might seem like a rather contrived experiment, and it is, but the point is that this is even possible in quantum mechanics, and it likely occurs in nature in some capacity. The consequences of not having definite causality on this scale are certainly not clear, but it is fascinating and confusing that it is even possible. So quantum mechanics and general relativity disagree, but maybe we can infer something about what time is from which theory is more accurate than the other. If only things were that easy. Both theories make excellent predictions that match experiments to such a high degree of accuracy that it is really hard to compare them, particularly given that most of the comparisons are actually limited by the experiments themselves rather than the theory. Physicists are looking everywhere for a theory that will merge both general relativity and quantum mechanics. Strings, loops, quantum gravity, these are just some of the suggestions, but none of them are particularly compelling so far. Some people have suggested that time is not real, but this is where the normal use of real is a little different. In this context, scientists mean that time is an emergent property rather than a fundamental one. Normally, this is used to describe that the time emerged from the Big Bang event and the direction of time is defined due to the Big Bang itself. But this is not very satisfactory. Until we find a good theory that combines both general relativity and quantum mechanics, we likely won't understand the nature of time. But we do have some very interesting theories on why time is always moving forward. Some scientists believe that time exists as a direct consequence of entropy and the trend that the universe is constantly trying to increase disorder. But the question that this raises is, what is the driving force behind this? A more compelling argument is that quantum mechanics is actually responsible for time moving forward. What do I mean by this? Quantum mechanics has a level of uncertainty about it. The present is a snapshot of a quantum uncertain world. We can't know what will happen because quantum mechanics doesn't allow that and therefore we can't predict the future. 
The past, on the other hand, is a result of this quantum world collapsing and becoming a classical one. That is, the past is a definite rather than a probabilistic world. This would imply that we can only exist within the quantum mechanical present. Therefore, a consequence of this theory is that the past no longer exists at least for us. So what I mean by this is that time is not a dimension and that we can't just move along it. Instead, the only real thing is the quantum present and our perception of time is just a result of our memory of a classical past and our uncontrollable persistence in a quantum present. What about time travel? Is it possible? And if so, in what capacity? It depends on your interpretation of time. If you believe in Einstein's general relativity, then in principle, time travel is possible. It often involves extremely large amounts of energy or even negative energy, both of which are unattainable currently and maybe forever. If you are pulled more towards a quantum mechanical interpretation of the present, the time travel isn't possible because the past no longer exists and the future isn't realized yet. Other theories in quantum mechanics say that time travel is possible, but on a scale of one or two particles, not large objects like us. But in truth, we don't know what time is yet. We have theories, but they need to be tested and developed further. The fun of science is trying to answer a question that no one has been able to answer before. The quantum world is an amazing one, but it is still confusing even to scientists. We are not even sure what interpretation of quantum mechanics is correct. You will have to watch this video if you want to know what all of these different interpretations are. And there are references for everything I discussed in the description.